Good evening, everybody. This is Woodblock Printmaker David Bull, speaking to you again from our new workroom here at Mocha Hong Kong. This is the next in our series of videos showing the process of making our Ukiyo-e Heroes prints on Mark's quite a milestone for us. I'll explain more about that in a few minutes, but first, let's take a look at some scenes of myself doing the initial proofing on the freshly carved set of blocks for Jed's I Choose You design. It's difficult for me to remember what sort of things I've explained to the viewers of these videos. We've made so many of them now in a row, but uh, probably I haven't talked about this before. Doing proofing on prints like this, of course, I'm not used to these, these set of blocks. They're just carved a few days ago, and I'm now printing them really for the first time. So when you put that white sheet of paper down onto the block, it covers up the design. And I don't know where to press. I don't know, this, there's areas that shouldn't be pressed here. There's areas that need quite heavy pressure. So the first few copies one makes of a print like this is a very touch and go process. I'm feeling my way around. Is it okay to press here or perhaps here? After you've made dozens of copies, it becomes second nature. But at the beginning, it's really quite difficult to figure out what to do. What you're seeing here is also different from a normal production run. Normally we would do the black pigment on one day and then wait overnight before starting the colors. That way the black lines get a chance to settle down. They don't, they don't smear when you do the color printing. But uh, today this is proofing, so we just go bang, bang, bang right through the whole thing. So the work at the end of the day is not ready for sale, but that's not the idea. The idea is simply to see if the blocks work and what kind of colors balance with each other. That's what proofing is about. You can see the same yellow tone is going on three of these different animals, uh, creatures, whatever they are. But uh, in the final print, the three of them will have quite different colors. There will be different colors going on top of these to produce a different effect in the finished print. But they all start with the same base yellow. And here we go with the first of those overlays. So this creature is getting a light pink, which will show in some places in the ears, and in other places it combines with that yellow to produce a golden, a golden yellow, the color we call Yamabuki in Japanese. This is a common way to try out some different color ideas uh, rather than make a whole bowl full of a particular pigment mix. Just dab a few on a piece of tile, in this case a gray plus a blue, and see what comes up on the block. And if it turns out that this is the color we want in the finished print, then we will make a specific bowl of that pigment so that all five people will have the same color in their prints.
when checking over this block I realized that uh, when carving out with my big chisels I had left kind of a sharp edge there and uh, if that's not taken away it'll leave marks in the finished print where the Baron rubs over this zone so uh, a little bit of smooth trimming and we never use sandpaper for this interestingly enough we just use chisels to uh, put a nice bevel on the edge there Look at this. These pigments we use you know, are so rich and beautiful. You know. This is a blend of a vermilion and a red. and uh, They come up just so you know, beautiful and deep. And there's nothing there. It's just powder pigment plus water with a little bit of paste on the block as a binder. And it gets pressed deep into the color and it'll last hundreds and hundreds of years. Did you catch what I did there? The brown is on two parts of the block here, but for the character that's closest to me, which has some delicate done a feathering carved at the end, I used a pretty delicate baron. But for this flat area of deeper brown, I used a stronger baron. One that really bites in and, and prints the color quite deeply. Two simple areas on one block here, and uh, at production time, absolutely the printer will prepare two brushes and two balls of pigments and uh, brush them out and then print them both together. But because this is still proofing stage, we're still playing around this and that, so it's, they're done separately. But the later on, time is money, they'll go together. Unlike most of the other prints in this Ukiyo-e Heroes series, uh, this one has no background colors. It's very much open white paper. And because of that, the paper has become dried out as I've been doing this testing. So uh, it's time to put a bit of extra moisture on here, put it back in the pack and wait five minutes for the moisture level to even out. This print only has one gradation. You can see it there, a bit of paste at one end of the brush, the pigment itself at the other end of the brush, and working on a side-to-side -side motion, the pigment creeps down to the moisture that's on the brush and the block, and uh, gives us a beautiful gradated effect. We call it bokashi in Japanese.
for this final block, I think I also used two barons on this uh, for the outlines are on the outside, a fairly delicate baron that didn't bang the line. And then for the inner circle there, I think, just a minute here, yeah, change to a different baron, one that's stronger with a bit more bite to put the deep color in that middle part. And there we are, that should be it for this one. Yes, there it is. And this is a very clean and simple one. And no background colors. It's a good effect. Oh, here we go. All seven of them done so far. The rickshaw cart, the fox moon, hero rests, infestation, our soul leader, the yokai dracul, and this one that Jed calls I choose you. That's seven done and uh, what, 93 more to go. Who knows? <laughs> So we now have seven prints in the Ukiyo-e Hero series. And the milestone I mentioned back at the beginning of this video, this print marks the completion of the fulfillment for our gigantic Kickstarter project. Jed and I took on a massive obligation to supply thousands of prints, both his ink jets and my wood blocks, and we've done it. It took us a year and a half, and I think we're about four weeks later than I originally projected, but hey, we've pulled it off. It has been an absolutely wonderful experience start to finish, and all of us here offer very heartful thanks to all of our Kickstarter backers and other collectors of our work. Your support has been very, very much appreciated. And we've shown so many new people the beauty of these traditional prints. Ukiyo Heroes is of course continuing, and we've contracted with Jed to do at least one new woodblock print for him every two, two months during the rest of this year. And we also have our new portrait series starting up in January. We're absolutely not going away. We've well and truly been kick-started and are up and running. To close out this video, it's perhaps time to show you some of the other people who've been working on these prints. Now, this is Tsushima-san behind me as I work today, but five of the ladies in all have each made a batch of the I Choose You print. And even though they generally don't like being in front of the camera, I got their permission to uh, do some filming while they were doing the work on this. Anyway, thank you again for your support, and I'll see you next time in a video showing the production of the Trouble of Footprint. And now, over to the printing crew. Say hello to all the people watching the video here today, Jed. Hello. <laughs> it's midnight in America and I should go to bed. All right, thanks for checking in with us, Jed. Minasan, chotu Jed san ni. Sayonara, toka. Bye bye.